Okay. Now, as promised, we're going to do the integral of the curl of f dot ds. Let's first calculate the curl of f dot ds, which is quite straightforward. <coughs> if we've already calculated our ds, our oriented surface area increment, our surface area increment multiplied by the normal vector. Uh, if we've calculated this as rx cross ry, then we can simply use it to calculate the curl of f dot ds, and that's what we're going to actually do. So, well, it's very straightforward. We calculated the curl previously, and, and, and uh, this is it. And then our ds, which we also calculated previously in the preceding video, is just this. Okay, this is what we get from our Rx cross Ry. So, we do the dot product, uh, the cro uh, yeah, the dot product of curl of F with ds, and we get what amounts to the normal component of the curl of F, the component perpendicular outward, perpendicular to the surface, multiplied by the area increment. Okay, so we get this, simplifies to this, here it is. And the, all this is just very straightforward, so you can work that out. Um, and I'm questioning it, and nah, I'm not questioning it anymore, okay. Um, Yeah, I think I did the algebra right. So, you know, it's been a couple of days since we actually did this. I'm a little late getting this up here. Uh, work out the algebra. I don't want to take time right now to, 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 to think through it, but I'm pretty sure I did that carefully. Okay, so now we want to do the integral of the curl of f dot ds. Well, as we said before, this is just going to be an integral over the unit circle. Okay, and, and <coughs> okay, let's be careful to... not actually integrating so we're integrating over the surface uh, of the upper hemisphere okay so the upper hemisphere lies above the unit circle down in the XY plane and the unit circle is described uh, by x going from negative 1 to 1, y going from negative square root of 1 minus x squared to the square root of 1 minus x squared. And right here is the curl of f dot n. Okay, so that's a pretty straightforward integral. Now, I didn't do all the integration. The only difficulties you're going to have in integrating this is when you integrate this, actually you won't have any difficulty integrating this with respect to y, but then when you uh, integrate with respect to x, uh, it's going to get a little, little hairier. Um, in any case, there's your integral. And if you don't like the idea of integrating this, well, fortunately there's a way to get around it. Okay? And the way to get around this is to integrate around the unit circle. The boundary of the upper hemisphere is the unit circle down in the xy plane. So, whatever we get for this integral should be equal to the integral around the closed boundary curve of just f dot ds. And this is little s, not big S. Okay, this is not an area increment, this is a linear increment. Okay, it's a distance in the direction of your tangent line, easily obtained by parameterizing your boundary curve and getting your distance increment in terms of the parameterization. Okay, so, uh, this is familiar, we're doing a line integral in other words. 
we're going to let we're going to parameterize the curve by x equals cosine t, y equals sine t, t from zero to two pi, just our usual standard uh, parameterization that takes us around the unit circle uh, in the counterclockwise direction. Our ds, well, this is distance increment, but it's a directed distance increment along the curve. Okay, and um, you know. Uh, the distance that you move, we've been through this with line integrals, but just to refresh, the distance that we move is the square of how far we move in the x direction and how far we move in the y direction, because that creates a right triangle, and our displacement uh, is the hypotenuse of that triangle. And as we move to small increments, it's valid to think that way. Um, so, as we move along this curve, ds, which is dx times i plus dy times j, the vector displacement becomes what? dx is negative sine t, dy is cosine t, dt. Okay, so dx is cosine t, dt, negative sine t, dt, dy is cosine t, dt, so we have our negative sine t times i, our cosine t times j times dt. Again, this is uh, should should be just a, a quick cursory review of what we do and why we do it. Now, to put this more into the context of uh, you know parameterizing the surface, parameterizing the curve, we could have written r equals cosine t i plus sine t j, so that dr equals negative sine t i plus cosine t j dt. And it might be might have been more expedient to have done that. You can do it either way. You should understand what you're doing in any case. Okay, so instead of ds, maybe we use dr, f dot dr. And that is a notation uh, that is commonly used. Okay, so I'm going to use the ds. f dot ds would be the same as f dot dr if we wanted to use dr. Uh, arose by any other name. Uh, whether we call this s or r doesn't really matter. Uh, we do the dot product. Now f, our original function, which I've kind of lost here, um, but you should have that in your notes, it's e to the x sine of xy times i. Well, x is cosine t, so the e to the x is e to the cosine t, and then it's the sine of xy. Now you got the sine of sine t cosine t times i. And at this point you start wondering, do I really want to deal with that integral, or would I rather go back and deal with this one? Well, you can actually do either, but this one's probably going to be easier for you now. Okay, um, then uh, the, the y component is z squared over x. Well, z is the square root of 1 minus x squared minus y squared. <coughs> and when you square it, you get 1 minus x squared minus y squared, and there it is, with x equal to cosine t, y equal sine t, because that's what we've implicitly done if we write this down, and we've explicitly done it here. And that's and divide that by your um, x, which is a cosine of t times j. And then you take your x, y, z, cosine t times sine t times the square root of 1 minus etc. Um, and you have this. Okay. So what you end up with, well, cosine squared and sine squared add up to 1, so minus cosine squared and minus sine squared add up to negative 1, so you got 0 here. Same thing here. All you're left with is this, and whether that's cause for joy or not depends on <coughs> how you like this term. Uh, you still have e to the cosine t sine t times the sine of sine t cosine t dt. So the integral of f dot ds around the boundary is this integral. So if you want to get this integral, you can do this one. And if you do that, that might tell you something about this sine of sine t cosine t thing. Um, And if you can integrate that, it could tell you something about this integral. But this integral can be done just by the techniques that you have. Okay, 
So that's, in any case, how you would set up these integrals. Now some integrals are easier to evaluate than others. Just because you can set it up doesn't mean you can evaluate it. Um, but you should use every trick at your disposal to try to evaluate whatever integral you choose to evaluate. Uh, and in a case like this, you have a choice. Okay. So just an example of the mechanics again of setting up a Stokes theorem integral, which sets the integral of the curl over the area, in this case the area of the hemisphere, equal to an integral around the boundary, in this case the unit circle.